Hey space fans, Tarek Malik, Managing Editor of Space.com, coming at you live today from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, here in Pasadena, California with Julie Wurtz Chen, yeah. uh, Entry, Descent, and Landing Systems Engineer. Got That's it. That's exactly right. You got it exactly right. <laughs> uh, exactly. For, for NASA's InSight uh, Mars Lander, which arrives at the, uh, at the Red Planet on uh, November 26th. November 26th, it's, tomorrow. That's right. We so. are less than 24 hours from landing on Mars. Well, how's it feel? I mean, here's, oh. here's, here's what it, the end result will be. Yes, the, the that's Insight what hopefully the lander. end result will look like. But uh, how, how are you feeling? How's the team feeling um, with Mars so close to you? It, we're feeling good. We're feeling good. It's, it's very nerve-wracking to be this close and to know that we're so close to going through EDL. We've all worked on this for so long. Um, so I'm very nervous, but... We've done everything we can. Everything's looking really good so far. The spacecraft is behaving beautifully. So, you know, I think we're all cautiously confident. I guess you could say we're just we're we're, we're feeling we're excited. How, how how large is the team? How large is the team? Um, here at JPL, the whole Insight team is probably 40 to 50 people would be my guess. And then the, the hundreds of folks number. that built it over the years. And then there's a ton, right, that's just the people who are working on it right now. There's a ton of people who have worked on it over the course of the past, I mean, this mission has been, I think, seven years. So it's been, there's been a ton of people who have worked on it over the course of the years. And of course it was um, built and it's being controlled out of Lockheed Martin in Denver. So they have a whole other set of team that's <laughs> at least our size out there working on it. So. And, and kind of just to get people caught up, uh, NASA's InSight lander launched in May of yep. uh, 2018. Uh, a few months, about a half a year to get to Mars. Yeah, right? it's about six months. We were pretty pretty quick cruise to Mars. And and uh, and it's got a kind of a, a hand crane on it. It's going to drop a seismometer, yeah. a heat probe. It's got a weather station, a magnetometer, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which we heard about earlier. Uh, lots of things to kind of understand how Mars works, not so much what it looks like on the outside. Yeah, right? that's exactly right. So InSight is really, we've done a lot of missions in the past to study the surface of Mars. InSight is really studying the interior of Mars. So we're trying to figure out what the core, the mantle, and the crust are really made of, and how thick they are, and what kind of material it is. And we're trying to figure out what's on the inside. Now, you mentioned EDL earlier, yes. uh, entry, yeah. descent, entry, descent, and landing. landing. What, uh -huh. what does that mean for <laughs> so, InSight? Like what, I mean, it's not on Mars yet. It has to get not, there. It's not. We're, um, I want to say we're about 250,000 miles from Mars, something like that right now. Um, so entry, ascent, and landing is the whole process to take us from the top of the atmosphere all the way down to the surface of Mars. And that whole process, we're going at over 12,000 miles per hour wow. when we hit the top of the atmosphere. So it's pretty fast. <laughs> and when we get all the way down to the surface, we're obviously going zero. <laughs> One way or the other, we're going zero. <laughs> and that whole process takes about six and a half minutes. So there's a whole lot of stuff that has to happen in there. And that's that's shorter than the amount of time it's, it takes a signal to get from inside back, is. back here. Right? Yeah, it takes a little over eight minutes for a signal from Mars to get back to Earth. So there's no way to joystick this. We have to we have to just let it do it autonomously on its own, um, which is a little bit more nerve wracking, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's if we were to try and send a command to Insight to do something, and then have it report back that it did it. It takes eight minutes to get to the spacecraft and then another eight minutes to get the report back to us. So it's a 16 minute round trip light time to get something to and, and report from Mars. Nice. So there's no way to joystick this kind of thing. You gotta, you gotta set it up ahead of time. So, so it's a critical phase then. Yes. You know, kind of yes. you're, you're, you've gotten the spacecraft as ready as it can be. Yep, uh, yep. Checked everything out. Yep. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, kind of walk us through like the steps. Let's sure. say, you know, the, the NASA's webcast will start around two, uh, two o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock our time. Two o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock our but time. But your team, I assume, kind of gets ready much, much we're, earlier. <laughs> well, we're on 24 hour ops starting now. So we have been actually since this yesterday morning. So we're doing as much as we can to prepare the spacecraft um, ahead of time, you know, starting a, a day ago. Um, in terms of the, the steps of how, how we get to the ground, um, when we, so we hit the top of the atmosphere, like I said, going about 12,000 miles per hour. At that point, um, we interact with the atmosphere and the drag in the atmosphere slows us down significantly. That's actually probably what slows us down the most. Um, and that'll heat us up. That drag will heat us up as we go in. So the heat shield will protect us at that point, which is critical, obviously. Really important We heat part. up to <laughs> about 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. So that's about the melting point of steel. It's really, really hot. <laughs> but we have this awesome heat shield that will protect us for the entire way. And by the time we get down to um, just about a thousand miles per hour, that's when we'll deploy our parachute. And we deploy that supersonically. 
So that's always a little bit of a nerve-wracking event whenever you deploy a parachute. Um, but that we deploy that. Once we're on the parachute, then the heat shield is done at that point. It's served its purpose and protected us, so we get rid of the heat shield. So it'll jettison, it'll, it'll pop off. jettison and pop off and go away from us. At that point, um, we deploy our lander legs because we land directly onto our legs. So we deploy our lander legs and we turn on our radar, which is the first time we've actually seen the ground from the spacecraft. All the way up until then, we've been using just velocity and acceleration to figure out where we are. And this is the first time that the spacecraft actually sees the ground. And it knows how high it is. Off and the and it'll of figure Mars. out how high it is. It's a very, that, that's a huge step right and, there. And we are how far in now? Like three minutes? We're two about, minutes? about four minutes probably in, I would think. Okay. Um, so at this point, so at that point, once we've detected and locked onto the ground, then we'll separate from that back shell from the parachute so that we're just our lander flying on its own. Um, and, but at this point, we're going about 130 miles per hour. So <sighs> we don't quite want to land at that speed. <laughs> so um, we have descent engines on board the spacecraft. And they'll both control our attitude, and then they'll obviously slow us down. Now, there's a gap, though, right, between when you kind of Drop, drop. Extremely short gap. It's drop. only about a half a second. Okay, great. So it's not. It, it sounds scary because people say it's free fall, but it's a very <laughs> short gap. It's okay. really just time to clear it and then turn on your thrusters. Um, and then yeah, so then we turn on our thrusters and we control our attitude um, and we slow down. We use those thrusters to slow down, and we should um, touch down direct, like I said, directly onto our lander legs at about five miles per hour. Okay. So, so do they do they have shock absorbers? They or? have a little bit of shock absorbers in them. Yeah. So okay. it should be okay. Okay. They should be good to go. And so on that approach, there's no risk of the heat shield getting in the way after you jettison it, the, the back shell flying away? You know, away. It's, uh, it's interesting. We've, we've done a whole lot of studies on that and a whole lot of work on that. So we actually, depending on where we are, we actually might do a little bit of an extra turn to make sure that we get away from the back shell. Um, and we have to do a little bit of extra fanciness with our radar to make sure that we don't lock onto the heat shield on the way down. That's um, actually quite a concern, is that you could think that the, the heat shield is the, the ground, ground, and then you could end up in trouble if you did that. So we've got different filters in place and stuff that will prevent that from happening. OK, great. So, so six minutes, se seven minutes, I yeah, guess. Six, six, between six, six and, and seven, seven, somewhere in there. Uh, of, of that automated, you know, hoping, hoping yep. it all goes hoping right. Hoping it all works, yep. You touch down. Yep. What happens in mission control in the mission operations? <laughs> like so, so it, you, you've got It'll you've got be, the calls coming in. Uh, yeah. Because when, when you're getting the calls, it all happened eight minutes ago. It all happened eight minutes ago. So by the time we hear about it, it's done one way or the other. Um, if we have so we have a couple of cubesats that are flying along with us, the Marco satellites, and there are two cubesats that are communication satellites, and they're the size of a briefcase, and they're really a te technology demonstration mission. And they were flying right along with us, and they're with us. And if they're they launched with they with launched Insight. with Insight on the same launch vehicle. Um, and if they're working at the time, then we should be they should be able to relay our data in real time back to Earth. Real time, of course, is eight minutes delayed. Yes. But as real time as it can get. Um, and so we should be able to know that we're safe on the ground right about at 11:54. Um, but if for some reason, like I said, Marco is a technology demonstration, so there's a chance that it won't work. And if for some reason it doesn't work, then we're relying on direct to earth signals, which are, we don't get nearly as much information then. And so there is a chance that we could have kind of an unambiguous, we don't exactly know whether we're safe or not when we land mm -hmm. for a, a while, actually. It could be, could be quite some time. There's an X-band beep that we get. And if we got that, we'd feel pretty good. So that's seven minutes after landing. Insight will send that directly Insight to Earth. will send that directly to Earth, and we'll be able to pick that up. And if we get that, then we feel pretty good. Um, that means you've been on the surface for seven minutes, and you're still alive, and your communication system is working. So that's a pretty good sign. So, so, so if, if landing time comes, which again is about 3 p.m. Eastern mm -hmm. Eastern time, I think it's, it says 12.54 Eastern. That's 11.54. Uh, it's 11, 11.54 a.m. Pacific, Pacific time, time, so 2.54 p.m., right? Yeah, that's right. Two fifty-four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's why you are the EDL systems in the air, and I'm asking you questions. Uh, so, so if that if that 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 touchdown time, you don't get that live signal mm -hmm. from Marco, then you'll wait that extra seven minutes. We'll wait so. the seven minutes. There is still a chance that we wouldn't get the X-band beep too. There are certainly scenarios where we could not get the X-Men beep and Insight could be perfectly safe on the ground. So uh, it would obviously be more nerve-wracking. <laughs> I'm obviously preferring that we have Marco the whole way down and we know our state right when we touch down or as soon as we can after we touch down. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that anything has gone horribly wrong if we don't hear the X-Men beep. 
Now, Insight isn't a rover. No. Uh, but no, uh, six years ago, when Curiosity landed, like literally minutes later, yeah. photos of Mars, yeah. you know, just came flooding down. Yeah. What should our, our viewers kind of expect after touchdown for Insight? It's, it's different. It's not a rover. It's very different. So it's not a rover. It's a lander. It stays put. Um, we do have a camera on board. We have a couple cameras on board. And we will be taking an image right after we touch down. Um, and assuming that everything is nominal on the spacecraft right after we touch down. And again, if we have Marco, which will be giving us the real-time feedback or the real-time playback, then we would get that image very quickly, probably within about 10 minutes after touchdown. So that would be a really exciting event if we got that. Um, if for some reason we don't have the Marco spacecraft, if we're relying on DTE, then we're going to have to wait a couple of hours to get that image down. So okay. it doesn't, doesn't mean that it would be any less of an exciting image, but I'd still like to get it right away. Our, uh, no, there's, there's the reconnaissance orbiter. Mm -hmm. is, is, is you know, around Mars, you've got Mars yep. Express, you've got yep. uh, MAVEN. Are, yep. are they watching the, the uh, inside? Yeah, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter is watching us and recording our data. And they're, so they're recording the exact same data that Marco is sending back to Earth, but they're recording it and sending it back later. And Odyssey is also recording our data for us. Still and going strong. Yes, yeah, still yeah. going strong. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> and uh, they'll send us back our data later, too. I think that's. That's a later pass, I think, even than the MRO pass, I believe. I'd have to go check that. But Odyssey is after 2001. That's a yeah. long mission. That's a long <laughs> mission. It's a long mission. They're amazing. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, you know, uh, I, I'm curious. You mentioned earlier, before we started, that you've been here. About 15 years. 15 yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm, I, I assume you've seen your, your share of missions. Is, what, I have. What makes Insight stand out from, from those? Um, you know, I love it. It's, it's a great, I think it's a great science mission. It's a great team. We have a wonderful team. I mean, all the teams at JPL are wonderful, but I love the team on Insight. Um, it's a it's a small mission comparatively compared to a lot of other missions, um, but we're we got big goals, right? We're landing on Mars. That's a big deal. So um, for the size of the mission, it, it's we're we're definitely kind of you know there was there was one milestone I think that we didn't talk about, and we can see it here. And it seems like seems like a really important one. Yeah, it is a big one. So so you can see. Uh, let's see if I can get out of the way here. You can kind of see on either side. There's these great big fans. Yeah. Uh, uh, that are that are the, the solar arrays. On top, that dome structure is the seismometer, I believe. So is that the dome structure that's on top of the lander deck is actually the wind and thermal si ah. shield. So that what's that's what goes on top. That little silver. Uh, guy down there is that's actually, I don't know if you can see him. This one right there? That one right there. That's actually the seismometer. So the arm will put down the seismometer and then it'll go back and pick up the wind and thermal shield and then put it right on top of the seismometer. But those... The, solar that, rays got to go out first. Those solar rays need to go out first. So, yeah. so when, when do you get the... Um, confirmation that that's going to happen because that happens a bit later. It right? happens pretty soon after we touch down but not soon enough. We wouldn't get confirmation of it soon enough before we go through Earth set. So we'll probably get confirmation of solar ray deployment uh, about two to three hours later. Um, I think it's around there when we get to the first Odyssey or the first MRO pass. I don't quite remember. Um, but we'll get confirmation of solar ray deployment when we get kind of that big first set of data back from the orbiters. But we won't have complete confirmation when we first touch down. So, so, so just to kind of review, because yeah. I want to make sure, like, when, yeah. when do I celebrate, right? You've got, you've got the landing. Yeah. Uh, you get, hopefully, the signal from Marco or, or a beep. Yep. yep. I, and uh, I would, like, go, ah! Yeah, I think that'll be a pretty good moment. Okay. <laughs> uh, but then you, you need to wait for the solar rays, because the, the solar rays, rays are what keeps so it powered, right? By the time we go to Earth set, we will have, um, we'll have confirmation that nothing major has gone wrong on the spacecraft. Um, if we if we don't get certain beeps from the spacecraft, but we don't have positive confirmation that the solar rays have deployed, so we can't know that for sure for a couple of hours. Okay. But I think we'd be, you know, hopefully feeling sort of comfortable. I mean, <laughs> it's space, so things can always go wrong, and uh, especially in a mission like this, you know, until we get the the solar rays open and then the instruments deployed and on the ground and taken measurements, you know, you can't completely rest <laughs> easy. But um, if we get that touchdown signal and we're looking good from Marco, and we can tell that everything's going well, that there, there's definitely reason to celebrate. Have you been able to sleep a lot? No. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> no. 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 Do you expect to sleep tonight no. at all? No. <laughs> not at all. Uh, is the there... nerves are going crazy. <laughs> so what, what uh, I assume that everyone will, we, I, I remember the, the, the Curiosity landing, I remember mm -hmm. the, the Pathfinder landings, uh, and, and the, the MER, the, pardon me, the Opportunity and spirit land, yes, yes. Uh, and lots of cheering, lots yes, of hugs. I yes. imagine you're expecting a lot of that. Uh. Hopefully, um, you know we don't 
plan any of those things out. It's just kind of the emotion taking over when it, something happens. Is so. there is there a party scheduled already? There is a generic party <laughs> scheduled for next weekend. Okay. That is not named anything. It's just a generic party. <laughs> All right. Got it. Got it. Wait until maybe until tomorrow wanna, night. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Tomorrow night we can talk about party. <laughs> I, I heard there's a tradition uh, at JPL in mm -hmm. the Mission Control Center. Uh, yeah. That involves some sort of penis. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> Can you can you yeah. just kind of let, let everyone know yeah, kind of so, here at the um, end what the what that's about? Sure. So back um, in the Rangers for Ranger Seven, um, Rangers one through six didn't go so well. They went. They were going where? The, um, to the moon? to the moon. Is that right? Yeah, I think they were to the moon, and they did not go so well, and um, there were failures, and so everyone was feeling kind of down. And Ranger Seven came along, and before the Ranger Seven launch, somebody passed around peanuts, and so um, Ranger Seven worked beautifully. The launch was was great and it worked usually and somebody said oh it must be the peanuts <laughs> and so ever since then we have been having peanuts for every critical event for every mission that we can think of just to give ourselves that little extra bit of luck because you don't mess with the works right you just you gotta go with it does everyone get peanuts or is it one jar of peanuts it's a couple of different jars of peanuts that get passed around the room Wonderful. so everybody shares a little bit and you kind of do a toast to each other at the, at the end right at the, at or? no you do it before the event okay. so we'll do it probably we enter the atmosphere at about um, 11.45 or so, and I'm guessing we'll do it closer to the top of the hour, but okay. I don't know. There's no specific time. It's, not, it's not in the procedure. When you pass it <laughs> it's not in that manual, that handbook, <laughs> right? It's not. You gotta, you you gotta, gotta check you that gotta off, right? It. But it is, it is a requirement that it has to be done. So we'll, we'll pass around the peanuts and, and uh, get as much good luck as we possibly can. If, if you have, just as a parting question, a bit of advice for folks that are kind of maybe thinking of getting in mm -hmm. to, to aerospace engineering or to uh, you know, just science and all. I'm just curious, kind of what what brought you here. You mentioned earlier, as you started uh, as an intern, you kind of yeah. got that got that that NASA that space bug there. Uh, yeah. What, what advice would you give to some students that are out there right now? Um, I would say to just you know keep keep trying and keep um, keep pursuing what you want to do. Um, I have always had a space bug, always, uh, for the time, from the time I can, <laughs> as long as I can remember, I've loved space, and I've always loved math and science, and so aerospace engineering seemed like a very obvious choice for me. And there was definitely some times in my college years where I was a little bit, oh, this is, you know, this is tricky, and, and maybe this is, you know, maybe I should consider something else. And I know one of my friends at the time asked me, okay, but is there anything else that you would be as excited about as aerospace engineering? And I said, no, not even close. And they said, then you do aerospace engineering. And I said, yep, okay, that's what I'm doing. So you got to do what you love. And uh, I don't love anything more than this. So. No, you're landing on uh, the planet. Landing on Tomorrow. Mars. Which, how often do you get to say that? Right? So exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, well, thank you so much, uh, oh, Julie, for, for the time. I know you're at the end of your shift and, <laughs> yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> so so do, do go get some rest. Uh, I will. Thank you all for, for watching us. And I, I, I hope to see you all tomorrow with a, a great report here from uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, you know, you can follow uh, NASA's Insight uh, at, uh, mm -hmm. at NASA Insight on, yep. on Twitter at nasa.gov slash live for all of their, their, their webcasts. The that live webcast from NASA does start tomorrow at, uh, at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time, and uh, we'll have that live on space.com too, so you can follow us here, you can follow NASA. Yep. Uh, and, and Julie, where are they gonna find you tomorrow? Uh, I will be in the MSA right next to Christine Soleil, who's gonna be doing the call on the way down, and um, I'll be trying to help explain what's going on in the CMSA. So if you're watching the NASA feed, you should see me there. So keep an eye out, and we'll talk yeah. to you then. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Oh, of course. <laughs>